Hey everybody, welcome back. So if you're keeping up, we're on day four of working with the new Tegu here. And didn't have a whole lot of luck this morning. I actually off camera when I came down before work this morning, went down to try and feed him a banana. He didn't want nothing to do with me. So I left it in there. He made quick work of it after I was gone. But we're gonna work on some more socializing this afternoon. And of course, we started making some videos with this fella back here. Um, his name is The Dude. He is our Marble Platinum uh, Reticulated Python. And we've got to clean his cage out, so we're going to go ahead and pull him out, get him soaking. Uh, he just shed. So we get him out real quick, and then we'll go ahead and move in, start working with the Tegu, and see how he does today on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. Now you guys may remember when we first got this fella, he was a little bit nippy, a little bit unhappy about people. So we are going to see, I've had him out a couple times since then, but we're gonna see how he does here. And this is something too, if you've got a snake that you're really unsure of, going in and taking the glass out like that can be a little risky. You gotta make sure that they're not gonna want to uh, pop your fingers and so forth, especially if you're holding the glass, that can be kind of a bummer. So you guys should probably be able to see the mess he made. <laughs> and uh, we're going to, instead of going in there and trying to hook him, trying to take him out, I've been down here for a couple minutes getting ready, so he's seeing me, he knows I'm down here. Um, and we're going to go ahead and pull his water out first. And I know he's going to go ahead and crawl out, stick his nose out here in just a second, as soon as I turn around. But... His water off to the side. Oh, better not set it on the lid. Okay, bud, time for you to come out. Let's see, which way do we want to take you out? We want to go this way. And since most of his body's over on this side, right there, I just want to go in, do a little tap. I want to try and get his head moved over quite a bit because I got to reach all the way back to the back of the enclosure and get him like that. There we go, bud. The only thing I'm really using that for is just kind of like as a last ditch effort if he was to try to pop me in the face while I'm taking him out. Oh, we got him running. Get out of your paper. There we go. Let's get you out and get you soaking. We just got the camera right there so we can show him in his bath. How you doing, buddy? Okay, so again, we've got another day with our friend here. Let's see how he's going to do for us today. Get his food bowl out of there. Looks like he wasn't thrashing around in there too much today. If your bowl's empty, you must have liked that, huh? You wanna come see me? Come on. And again, just like yesterday, I'm really wanting as much as I can to just get him moving of his own accord, him coming over to check me out. Hey, boy. I'm gonna start petting on him just a little bit now. And you see he's starting to, you know, <clears throat> we've had a little bit of a discussion too in the, uh, in the comments. Uh, some folks that have had a lot more edgy tegus, you know, pointed out the, f the fact that, you know, when they sit there and they close their eyes like that, it's just a sign of distress. You know, they're trying to block out the outside world. It's kind of their way of succumbing to the inevitable, which is kind of what I figured with him. I knew it wasn't anything pleasant because he's just still so, so uneasy about all the interactions and stuff. 
But the cool thing is, is even as uneasy as he is, he's still not running. He's still forcing himself to come over here. I, you can tell it's kind of against his better judgment. He doesn't know what to think yet, but here in the next couple days, we're actually gonna go in and start taking him out. I'm gonna take him out and do some handling in my lap, see how he does with that. He's probably not gonna do really great. Um, and then we'll end up moving him over to the other enclosure over there. Now see, again, this is one of those times where I really want to go in and start interacting with him. As a matter of fact, let me do this. How you doing, bud? Now, one thing about his behavior that you really got to watch, as you can see, when he starts to come towards me, He's got that, he's got an aggressive way about him. And somebody had mentioned, you know, that just like we talk about, we got to trust them in order for them to trust us and all this other stuff and how pulling back might make them uneasy. But when they've got clear body language that says, I'm getting ready to bite you, you don't just leave your hand there and let them bite you. Um, you know, it is kind of a dance back and forth and you've got to build that up and you get to the point where you can trust them. You can be reasonably sure that they're not going to get you. Um, ain't that right, bud? Let's go in while he's got his eyes closed. Now see, you can see his breathing speeds up when I start touching him. But this is progress this little bit right here he's sitting there he's got his eyes closed he's not hunching his back up he's not opening his eyes or trying to get away from me and all i want to do right now is there he's had enough come on bud come on it's okay i see when he tells me that he's had enough I back off, I let him know that he's not going to be forced into anything, you know. I'm going to let him settle for a second and then try and go back in there and make a little bit more contact. See, that's, that's what we talk about with the amount of patience that it takes with these guys to really get them comfortable is we've got to wait for them to come around in their own time and that's going to be different for every animal, you know. Some of them, you can reach right in. They immediately just start getting curious. They want to see what's going on. They don't feel threatened. Others, it's going to take a little bit longer. But I will say this, you know, when you're working with these guys, there is no shame in taking precautions about getting bit. Um, <clears throat> I don't care how big, how tough you are, stitches are stitches, you know, severed tendons are still severed tendons. And, um, you know, although, you know, he's not got a terrible bite. I mean, it's not like croc monitor bite bite because, you know, only the, only the front teeth in their mouths are really pointed since they're omnivorous. You know, their front teeth are more designed for catching and holding prey. And they've got almost like molars in the back because they eat a lot of vegetation too, which is something that you'll see in, uh, um, you know, animals that eat vegetation. So, so it's not like his bite would cripple me or anything like that, but we still want to avoid it. Now, while I've been sitting here bumping my gums, he rested his head back down again. So we're going to try and go in. Just touch him on the back of the head. And you can see he's still kind of anxious about this because his respiration increases when I'm touching him. But it's all just baby steps. And the, the reason why I'm so optimistic about this guy and, you know, and thinking that within the next week or two, we'll be able to get there is that yesterday I couldn't do this. 
every time I touched him yesterday, he'd back away, he'd come at me, he tried to bite me that one time, he'd start raising up and haunching up and arching at back and everything like that. So from yesterday till today, we're making progress because this whole time now that I've been explaining this part, he hasn't moved. I'm just rubbing his back. And he's starting to get accustomed to the idea that, okay, I'm going to be okay. And then he gets up, he starts to pull away. I back off of him. I say, okay, just, okay. Are you good? Settle back down. And he settled back down a little bit quicker this time. His head rested back down there again. Of course, you know, he's wanting to bask and everything. So part of him is still like, dude, I just want some heat. Leave me alone. But what I'm really waiting to see is for him to stay relaxed like that and to keep his eyes open for a little while. I want him to, I want him to start seeing me and then not reacting so much to my hands. So it's one of the reasons why I'm talking to my hands like this because I want him to be moving and I want him to start getting accustomed to seeing that motion, start seeing my hands so it doesn't freak him out. So he doesn't think that there's, you know, an opportunity to bite something when he sees them. So once again, I'm just gonna go right back in. There you go, buddy. A little bit more. It's not going to take nothing but a second here, and he's probably going to start coming back up. Hmm. Okay. Okay, bud. You want to come see me now? You want to come see me now? There you go. You've only got one eye closed. <laughs> there you go. Now, once these guys start getting socialized, tegus are like attention sponges. And they love the attention. They love the interaction. It's a whole reason why he's, you know, it's a whole reason why he's not running away from me is because their natural disposition is, you know, they're really interactive. Um, that's why they will make such awesome pets for folks. But like I said, based on some different circumstances, based on how they may have come up, what they've had to deal with, how much exposure they've had to people, um, you know, they may, you know, you may find one that's a little bit more wild than another one. And uh, we just want to start slowly increasing the contact that we have with him. And, you know, I'm comfortable right now because he's not demonstrating any um, aggressive behavior. Now, one thing that you'll notice with lizards is when they get comfortable, when they start basking, they'll splute those legs out. You're good, bud. You're good. See? You're okay. See, and he had that one second there where he opened his eyes up and was just sitting there with his eyes open, letting me rub on him. So again, just in that few minutes, there's a little bit more progress there. But like I was saying, you'll notice with the lizards, you know, when they start getting comfortable, them legs extend out, they get their bellies you know, flat against the ground. And, uh, you know, he's pretty much there with his, you know, legs all kicked back behind him and so forth. So we're just going to continue doing this here for a few minutes. And see, your eyes are open. You can see me. You can see me. It's okay. It's okay. And here again. Go in. And get used to that contact. Come here, bud. Come on back over here. 
Come on back over here. There you go. See? Good boy. Good boy. And as long as he keeps coming back over here like that, I'm going to keep interacting with him. Probably going to keep this going until he, you know, decides he wants to turn around and go away. Which is right now. <laughs> Are you done with me, bud? So I'm going to take that as my cue. He turned around. Showed his tail to me. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and respect his space right now and take that as he wants to be left alone. He wants to bask. And um, we're going to go ahead and leave it at that. So it's really cool. I'm really excited to see how much he's calming down a little bit. I know it's baby steps, but in lizard terms, that's really a pretty big deal. Like I said yesterday when we was working with him, I couldn't get in there and touch him without him almost immediately reacting to it. Now today, even, you know, sitting up here and basking and all that stuff, so he's warm, he's not lethargic or anything like that. So that's not the explanation. Um, you know, he's starting to open his eyes a little bit and become a little bit less reactive. And it's just this little bit over time where, you know, you're still on point, you're still paying attention to him and you know, at this point, when they start moving towards you, you still got to be cautious and not just leave yourself out there. Um, you know, in a lot of cases, it's, you know, you'll see, you know, working with monitor lizards, young ones and stuff, where you go in and you kind of let them, you know, you get up underneath their chin and you start rubbing them and stuff and you start getting them used to that. Well, when you're dealing with a larger lizard like this, um, you really got to be a lot more careful because there's potential for a lot more damage when they bite you. And there's no shame at all with being cautious. I, it's it's not that you're afraid of the animal. It's that, you know, we're not going to sit here and stab ourselves in the hand with a pencil. Um, just like we're not going to stick our finger in a light socket. Just like we're not going to stick our finger in a big lizard's mouth. Um, so it's kind of just common sense. Um, and you guys will see as we go here uh, at the rate that he's going right now. Um <clears throat> Tomorrow's Wednesday, we're going to be feeding. Uh, so I'm going to be bringing him down a bunch of greens and berries and stuff tomorrow. So we'll do another feeding with him. Uh, I think the way I'm going to schedule his feeding is like Wednesdays is going to be all greens and fruits and vegetables and stuff. And then I'll give him the meats and so forth on the weekend, feed him the same time I feed Niles. Uh, so it'll all work out pretty good. So we'll throw some more greens in there with him tomorrow and sit down here with him while he eats. And that'll be another opportunity to get even more contact while he's kind of starting to associate us with something good. We're bringing him food. Um, so I'm really optimistic about this. So we're going to go ahead and get, uh, get the dude out. He should be done shedding. I'm going to get him put back into his enclosure and uh, leave this guy alone and let him relax. He did really good today. So you guys have an outstanding day. Oh, and on a side note, before you go, um, our Saturday night live stream that we do at seven o'clock Eastern, um, we've talked about this before that's coming up. And then after that, we've got the open zoom call, zoom call for the paid Patreon members, but this weekend, and I'm gonna go ahead and start advertising this, uh, for everybody that's in the live stream, we're going to go ahead and open that zoom call up to everybody that's on our live stream with us. So, um, just so that folks can kind of get a feel for the group and kind of see how the conversations go and stuff like that. Um, might encourage some more folks to join and jump in the conversations afterwards, jump on the Patreon and so forth. Uh, so we think that's a really, really cool idea. Um, so this coming weekend is Saturday at seven o'clock Eastern. We'll do the live stream and then about 8.30, we'll cut off the live stream and go into the open Zoom call. Uh, that one's going to be for everybody. Um, so feel free to have your animals ready. Come in, show your animals off, and stuff like that. Ask any questions that you may have. Got a lot of really knowledgeable folks in there. Uh, and we have a lot of fun. So uh, I will see you guys <clears throat> tomorrow when we go to feed this guy. Actually, here at um, 6 o'clock, we have another podcast to go on to. So as soon as I get the link for that, I'll go ahead and post that up as well. 
So you guys have an outstanding day and we will see you tomorrow.